Today I'm going to show you how I paint my picture frames. But first, let's talk a little bit about paint. I really love to work with chalk paint, and I especially love the chalk paint by Two Chicks and a Tool Belt. And I was super happy to be able to work with them to create my own collection called Farm Girl Paint. I have 18 different colors in my collection, and I've created them to go with all of my fabrics. Working with vintage colors is my very favorite thing to do, and so I'm so happy that I have paint colors that I can use to match all my favorite things. So for the opening of this video, I looked around my house and I started putting a few of the things that I've painted on my kitchen table so that I could show you kind of a variety of things that you could do. I wanted to show you that not only can you use this paint to paint large pieces of furniture, your kitchen cupboards and things like that, but you can paint small items to add to the decor of your home. I have five neutrals in my collection and I love how they work with the vintage colors. It's available in three sizes, 32 ounce, 16 ounce, and these cute little two ounce bottles. I'm gonna be using the color Blossom to paint this frame. This is my medium vintage frame and it has an eight inch opening. This is the box that it comes in and this is what the frame looks like. It's already painted, it's distressed just a little bit and it's ready to go but I like to change up the colors every now and then, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's talk about brushes. If I was going to be painting a large piece of furniture, I would use a bigger brush like this. But when I'm painting my smaller, you know, home decor items, I just use regular paint brushes, and I just keep them in a tub, or my smaller ones for details and containers like this. The first thing that I do when I open a jar of paint is to stir it up, make sure it's all mixed up good. And for these, I'm using these little drink stirrers. You could use popsicle sticks, whatever, but I just have these in my bucket and I've ended up using them quite a bit for this. Of course, if I'm using a larger jar of paint, then I will use paint sticks and I like to keep a bunch of these on hand. Okay, so let's get started with the painting. I simply just put on a smooth, even coat. I try not to make it real heavy. And I start in the insides and just kind of go around that molding and make sure that's all covered. After the insides, then I go ahead and do the edges. And then I go ahead and finish up by doing the top of the frame and just smooth everything out. This is just the first coat I'll end up doing too. I like to keep some baby wipes or some wet wipes handy so that I can clean up in between coats. And of course, I always have a roll of paper towels handy as well. Now chalk paint does not take a long time to dry, but you know, I figure why wait? When I'm doing small projects like this, I always keep an old blow dryer handy and I just speed up the process. Because I don't want my frame sitting on the drop cloth, I'm afraid the edges might stick to it. I use these little pizza things that you get in your pizza boxes and I hold it up and that way it can dry and not stick to the drop cloth. So because I used the blow dryer, the first coat is dry in just a few minutes and now we can go ahead and do the second coat. Now I wanna do the second coat just the same as I did the first, just nice and smooth and thin. Okay, the second coat is complete, and I just go ahead and clean up my brush with water. When the second coat is dry, it's time to apply the wax, but first I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding. When I sand my frames, I don't really do it a lot. I just make sure that I'm getting the corners, and I especially like to sand around the molding if there is any, and just kind of distress it a little bit. You can do it as much or as little as you would like for yours. Now 
After sanding, I like to wipe it down to get all that sanding dust off. And you can use a tack cloth or just a clean cloth. This is just from an old t-shirt that's ripped up. Now when I'm painting, I don't use rubber gloves. The paint washes off with soap and water off my fingernails and everything. But when I'm waxing, I always use rubber gloves. I'm going to be using clear wax first, and then I'm gonna be putting brown wax on top of that. And both of these waxes are also by Two Chicks and a Tool Belt. Now again, if I was doing a large piece of furniture, I would apply the wax with a waxing brush like this. But for a smaller piece, I just use an old rag or an old sock. They work really well. What I do is I just dip the rag in the wax and I just rub on a thin coat. You can kind of see where I've waxed, how it just kind of goes darker and it's just a really nice finish. If I don't want any dark wax on it, one coat of wax of the clear is really nice and works well just to finish off any piece. I use brown wax when I want to distress the piece and make it look just a little bit more vintage, a little bit older. And when applying the brown wax, I do it on top of the clear wax while it is still wet. And so I kind of go back and forth and work with both of them at the same time. Meaning if I get a really dark spot, I can take my clear wax and go over the dark spot and it takes that off. So don't really get nervous about putting too much brown wax on at once because it's totally easy to just take it off with the clear wax. It's no big deal. Now, once I think I have enough brown wax on there, I just go ahead and take the cloth and buff it and just kind of make sure it's all nice and smooth and till I like how it looks. Okay, I love how it looks. Now I'm just gonna let that wax cure for 24 hours before I frame my cross stitch. Now I use the wet ones or the baby wipes to clean my wax brush. You don't wanna use water to clean your wax brushes. So again, for my painting brushes, I do clean those with water, but every once in a while, I like to clean them with this soap, this pink soap. I've always used this for so many years and I really like it. Now let's talk just a little bit more about how I use my paint. Of course, you can use the colors straight out of the bottle, but every once in a while, I do like to mix them. Now you can easily use my picket fence, which is the white color to lighten any of the colors up, or you can add a darker color. You can use these little plastic trays that are used for mixing watercolors, but typically I'm mixing larger amounts. So I like to use these vintage ash trays because they have a place that you can even rest your brush. And I also use these Melmac luncheonette plates. I like the dividers in them, that works well, and they wash up really nice. Now my chalk paint obviously works on wood, but I wanna let you know that it works great on metal, on glass, and even on these little terracotta pots. You can just paint one or two coats on, you can distress them, you can put brown wax on after, you can just use the clear wax, whatever you wanna do. I often use my farm girl paint to paint mason jars or glass bases. It's fun to distress the ones that have the little designs or the words from the jars. Now, this one I wanted to show you was just a vintage wooden bowl and I distressed that with the brown wax. I love to go thrifting and find items that I can give a vintage redo. In my latest book, Farm Girl Vintage 2, I used my farm girl paint to paint all of the doll beds. For watching and I'll chat with you later.